Uh, I'm Jane Hudson from the University of Sheffield. And I'm Deborah Bullivant from Inspire Rotherham, which is a literacy social enterprise in Rotherham. Wonderful. OK, so what project are you presenting here? Uh, we're presenting the Language as Talisman project, um, which is a project, it's really all about not thinking of language as something that people communicate with in a kind of invisible way, but thinking about language in a way that people connect with it and have ownership of, of it. Thinking about language that people feel passionately about, uh, sayings from families, special words, favourite words. Uh, language is a thing that people feel about, not, not just something sort of transparent medium. So how have you been involving, involving communities and collecting that kind of, kind of information? Well, I'll talk about the communities I've been working with. I've worked in two, two different strands. I've worked with an older community where, where I went into bingo halls and different places around the community of Raw Marsh in Rotherham, which is a pit mining village traditionally known as. Um, worked with those communities, talked to lots of people in those communities about what does, what's your talisman in terms of language. At first, they, they looked at me like I'd grown three heads, and then eventually they said, well, actually... I, I, my granddad used to say this or my mum said that and I now say it to my children and things started to emerge so we then they, I said to them how can we research this for your community so they said to me because this was a collaborative uh, research pro project they said we'd like you to gather stories so I said right where where shall I gather these stories in the park go and gather stories in the park so I did I stood in the park on their behalf acting as their vessel gathering stories from around the park and these stories were amazing they were from the pits from the people and from the park so we called it the three P's and then they decided to take that further and listen to those stories analyze them bring the language out of those and find the talismanic material language within it they started to see that there were there were bits within the language that they didn't understand why they happened so they then needed to find out more about it so that became the research project listening analyzing using that as their data to then do something about it and what they have found from that is that they value their local dialect at first they found they were using terms like oh we speak we speak raw marsh round here and you know when you speak raw marsh well it's it's a bit where it sounds a bit thick you know and they use things like that when as time went on they started to realize that actually the language that they spoke, the dialect that they spoke, meant such a lot to them and they were losing it. One woman, when she started to do her research into her own family and her own community, found that even herself, she'd started to change the language use. So she talked to her husband about her pat lunch, his pat lunch, and called it snap. To her child, she called it pat lunch. So she was already changing she was the catalyst of change in terms of how language was being used in her family so they were losing the local dialect that they had been brought up with and had been passed down through generations so we've now got a community action project which they're part of to value the language again use stronger and uh, strong terms in terms of their dialect and call it strong dialect and, and good usage of terms around the language and to work with the schools on how they can develop uses of literacy in its right context within the school but also recognize standard English has its place as does their own local dialect which is something from their heritage. And that I suppose is the main main difficulty with the education is that barrier. Have you had any particular favorite expressions that you that you people have come out with? Yeah I mean we've got some here that they materialized into actual objects some of the children started to bring some of them into actual objects um, but yeah there were some that were one of the things that they used was the name of a road and they said to me we'll know if you're from round here by how you say this and they spelt h-a-u-g-h -H. and I and they said say that road so I said Hoff Road and they said no that's not how we say it around here so they used it as a sort of test to see if you were from raw what they call rawmish so they, so they said we say it as off road. So if you're from round here, you say off road. So they demonstrated it through that, and also some sayings were things like, um, like I said, snap. It's something that they use in the pits for the boxes because they snapped. But they had to find out why they used it because they didn't know where it had come from. And then there's all sorts of others like I'll, you, I'll have your guts for garters, which was a common one. Um, and uh, you make a door, better door than a window, things like that. They used a lot. 
uh, put wood in oil and different terms were used across different boundaries as well so whole turned to oil in some parts of raw marsh so you've got the different lines where things changed in terms of the dialect use as well. So where are you going to be taking this project next? Um, two, sort of two areas it's going next really. One is we're going to be building a website because uh, the, the project has got sort of multiple different strands. Um, we've had various people involved, we've had various community partners involved. The language as talisman idea has, has sort of acted as a, a sort of starting point and a metaphor that's promoted various kinds of discussion. Um, and we've ended up with a really rich set of materials, but there's a bit of a danger that it all becomes dissipated. So what we're going to try and do is create this website which will draw a lot of it together and also give us an opportunity to have a talk about what we learnt from it and, and draw some of that together. And then in particular, one of the things we'll be doing is, is running some workshops for teachers. A lot of what we've been talking about actually has important implications in terms of education, in terms of how schools talk about dialect, in terms of how you do exactly that thing of helping children to approach standard English while not feeling kind of disempowered through their own language. So there's a lot of work, I think, to be done helping teachers to, to, to use, use that kind of work effectively. Absolutely, um, and this has been going on since 1921. When yes. I look back at policy, and the policy has been trying to drive schools to look at uses of literacy but not throw away and not devalue local yeah. dialects but to actually use them yeah. and we still not tackled it yeah. we're still not tackling it and and we're still going yeah. in the wrong directions where we're yeah. not holding on to our value yeah and I think, I think a lot of the time that that sort of standard language debate is very top down that it's it's external experts coming in and telling teachers and schools and children and communities how they ought to be teaching and I think one of the things our project has been trying to do is actually have a dialogue with the children with the communities and trying to understand how things look from their point of view and sort of work at it bottom up you know everybody wants children to have the best opportunities in life but it's not necessarily the case that coming in and saying you speak bad English you must do this is the best way of doing it so yeah, yeah to hold on to part of their own identity exactly. as yeah. well as part of it without being too sort of prescriptivist about how you write that's fantastic so where can people find out more <laughs> or is that still in, in the that will that will come up. It's um, a new place. It's the, uh, there's the Inspire Rotherham website where there is a, a page especially for languages talisman on there, um, and it also links to other web pages. So as they're coming on board, it will keep signposting to those. But also the University of Sheffield yeah. is setting yeah. up a web page for yeah. it. Yeah. And in the meantime, if anybody wanted to find out about it, probably the best thing to do is email me, uh, j.hodson, that's h-o-d-s-o-n, at sheffield.ac.uk, and as soon as our website goes live, we'll email you with it. Ah. Fantastic. Well, thank you ever so much. Do enjoy the rest of the day, won't you?